like what is the natural limit of your muscular size like that would be the only thing where you could even be progress on like that's 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 the first thing the second thing is this notion of this five-year arbitrary limit which you know they say like if you okay if you train well if you train optimally but who does train usually optimally muhammad ali said i don't start counting until i start to feel pain because he understood that you know it doesn't matter like how many reps you do it what matters is how you feel in the body you're focusing like on the wrong end i guess if you're like focused on the muscles and the muscular size and all of that i think it, you're starting from the wrong end oftentimes some basic training in just a good manner and you could improve your uh, potential dramatically so quite many years ago like we can go even 10 years back there was this idea that you know, we, every person who, who starts training, they have this time limit, about five years. Like if you train in an optimal way, in a good manner, then within five years, you would reach your, let's say, genetic or natural limit in your development. This usually referred to specifically the muscle building. How much muscle could you build in your body? And I checked that this same belief that was already like 10 years ago, when I was, you know, getting into training much more seriously, it still is prevalent today. People still like it. If you Google this thing out and you still find the same thing, like five years, you reach your limit. And I think this notion and this entire thing, you know, it, it, it for, first of all, it came for me like kind of like an, like a very insecure feeling of your own potential in general, because you just want to make sure, like you want to con constantly get this confirmation, like where can I actually go? Where can I reach? And you're trying to Google. I tried to Google these things out many years ago, like uh, how much can you build muscle? Like, well, I, I tried to like knew beforehand, before even trying properly training, I tried to knew like what was my limit. Like how crazy is that idea in, in general? Like, like I could foresee it somehow, like who can foresee it in general? This notion had like two things that I think are big trouble for people in trying to reach their, reach their own potential. One is that this whole thing focused on just usually the muscle size, that's your limit. That's what you focus on. That's the most important factor. Like what is the natural limit of your muscular size? Like that would be the only thing where you could even be uh, be like progress on like that's 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 the first thing the second thing is this notion of this five-year arbitrary limit which you know they say like if you okay if you train well if you train optimally but who does train usually optimally because the years mean absolutely nothing if you're not actually really really like trying to improve on your training really like trying to like very nuancedly trying to learn new stuff about training, learning new stuff about your body and really implementing new methods into your training. Almost no one is doing them. The problem is people, or there's a confusion. I think people are just confused. They think that they're doing optimal training. Whereas, you know, getting optimal training knowledge is not even always so easy. So one, people, we've talked about this actually before, the standards of people, they only aim for on a kind of a low level, just, you know, this muscle size, which doesn't really tell any, anything about your broader abilities, your capabilities, your health and your functionality. And on the second way, uh, second part, you imagine that there is this kind of limit. You perhaps overestimate your training abilities and you think that somehow in five years or something, you can reach a limit. Whereas the way I see most people training, they're not going to reach their limit in 50 years or maybe even in their in entire lifetime yeah personally when i started lifting it's like i actually for me as my training started to be really fruitful and really impactful only after five years of following the mainstream methods yeah, only after five yeah, yeah after yeah, five years point. like because because before that i was doing like what everyone else is doing so or trying to lift the most amount of weight and do it consistently like, and so on but of course, I got some results, but I was nowhere, like my half of my body was missing. And I had so many imbalances and so many areas I didn't even address because I was just focusing on the main muscle groups and the main compound movements and like this, like chin-ups and, and pistol squats and bent over rows, deadlifts and like this. So I was thinking I was training everything, but I wasn't really training anything at all only the major 
muscle groups in very one dimensional linear fashion. So actually I would say maybe 80% of my potential was not even like worked on because I was my training was so limited and so basic. But after five years, because when we started to really explore the new territories of training and developing the body, then every training session moved me forward and made me better athlete, mover, human being, and so on. So it's really like a funny thing to like think in three, because, uh, because I've heard like some people think it's like three years. Like if you train oh, yeah. consistently for three years, then you're like, okay, you're max, maxed out your natural potential and now you have to use steroids and supplements and whatever to push yeah. forward. When in reality, it's all about how you train and so on. And interestingly enough, I had very similar thing about age because when I remember when I was like 16 or 17 and I was Googling like, uh, is it too late to start boxing when you're 17? Right. And <laughs> now I'm doing boxing very seriously at like 15 years later. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. and even that it's like, it's like some really weird thing to even, even like think your age is like limiting factor and then your potential is like something you can actually grasp because it's like our motto has been for many years even on like youtube channel you can see like be limitless mm -hmm. so you shouldn't put any limitations on yourself or on your progress yeah i think the age is like a huge uh limiting or not limiting factor but the factor that brings doubt to people and i have th had this very same thing like uh, okay, I'm I'm already this old. These are this or these young guys, you know, who are already like so good at boxing and wrestling and doing all this stuff. And you know, I'm here like thirty something. So like, what what can I can I really improve? Can I you know develop these skills? Can I you know get any better? Like it's and I think most people have this uh, in general about the, their <coughs> this doubt. Like they are maybe over 30 years of they may be 40 years old or, or 50 fi years or 60. Yeah, 50 or even 60 years old, and they think like they're really considering like if it's too late, if it's, if it's like too late to make change, that's crazy. Like because uh, the human like your human body, there's there's no limit. Like this, all that we put the age limit or this kind of year limit or this natural limit, this is not real limits. These are not real like limits. Of course, there's the limit, you know, at some point you you are very old and you, you know, you pass away and this way, this is the ultimate limit. But within your lifetime, there's like constant, constant growth if you do the right things. And if you start to follow the, the right, let's say methods, because I think the big problem here is the, is the confusion is that people don't really know even how to train properly. Like you said, only after five years did you start to really even make pro better progress. And this was the same exact for me. I was like, it took multiple years of even getting to the point where I could start to scratch my potential. And we were also more serious, um, more knowledgeable and more informative about the training yeah. than maybe 95% of everyone else. And we still, it was still, you know, nothing. Yeah, it's actually, it's it's almost the opposite of how people usually perceive their body and their potential. Because for them, it's like the more years go by, the less you have potential. Like the, <laughs> for us, it's like the more you train, the more years you train, the more you have that potential almost. It's like, th it's yes. like the completely uh, opposite approach. One is, you know, for me, it, I actually, you know, I went through multiple transformations in, on this journey and I had, uh, how to say, multiple different phases and, and multiple different goals also where, where I was a bit fixated on. In the very beginning, like it was just actually, I just wanted to keep myself prepared. Like I was like intuitively felt that training is good, having a stronger body, bigger muscles or just looking better and having good posture, that's good. Like it's it just makes sense. Like everything will be better. So I thought that Okay, because back then I didn't, I was not becoming a fitness trainer. That was not my goal. I was, you know, I had no idea what I was going to be eventually in the future. But I knew that which in whichever position I find myself in the future, I will be better off if I'm in shape. Like it doesn't matter where I am, you know, if, if I'm in better shape, I will do better like 
maybe if you find yourself in a buffet, it's better to be fat. But <laughs> but other than that, you know, you want to be in shape. Like everything will be better in your life. So that changed. You know, at some point, I became very much more ambitious, and then I wanted to build the muscle. I, d- I just that was my potential. Like that, that's what I was seeking for. I was really fixated on that. That was the phase that you know, and and the big lifts, heaviest possible weights, biggest muscles. That was my that was my goal. And then again, I I went to the transformation. I grew bigger. I became stronger. And then the next transformation was because my body was broken. Now I want to you know, heal my body. That was the most important back factor. And that healing of the body was itself something that it took a lot of time. It took many years. But that that healing process was the thing that actually constantly, the more I was able to heal my body, the more I was able to cure my painful joints, the more I was able to to make my joints slimmer, make my muscles move better, the more I year by year grew my potential to where it's, uh, is, uh, it is actually now, where I just feel like now it's just like it's opening up. Of course, you know, already for some years it's been like that. But this is like the the point that I think people people miss in the training. Like it's, it's your potential just increases the more you actually train. Yeah, for years we have been talking talking about increasing your potential, building your foundation, foundation. Because you know, if you are if you are like a pyramid, mm-hmm. of course, how high or how tall you grow, mm-hmm. it depends on the foundation. How large and how strong is the foundation? And the same way in Dubai, how they build skyscrapers, they have to really dig deep into the ground, and like sometimes it's like the double the size of the skyscraper, like the foundation beneath the ground. And likewise, if you look at trees, they also grow beneath in their roots and that way they can uh, also maximize the potential upwards so so this is what we have been talking about for many many years and th- this is like what our training methods like at le- uh, especially athlete 20x method is a lot about it's about bulletproofing the joints fixing the imbalances correcting the poster and building the foundation that you can actually skyrocket your development and you can actually like catapult your potential to the whole nother sphere and and how it actually happens because for many years i went through the same phase which a lot of people they should go through this phase and they have to go through this phase in order to actually reach the next level in their development or even like even maximize anything in their physical like a body and what i did like what aero did also like we went through the joints we went we, we went through the basics and we really bulletproofed everything so that when we actually did something very strenuous and very demanding our body was able to withstand it like no problem at all and even today when we train wrestling or boxing or kickboxing it's like i never feel never feel any joint pain anywhere in the body if if i feel pain it's from the impact it's not from the basic function of the body like maybe of course you can still get hurt if it's like a really big big impact and sure. mm-hmm. and you like a uh, twist your angle or something like this of course you you are not like invincible but nothing hurts because you are doing like some basic movements and that's not the case with most people like I remember even five years ago when I did boxing sparring, I felt little discomfort in my knees because it's very versatile movement where you, where you are very fast, vastly moving from one direction to another. Mm-hmm. And that's the reality for <coughs> most people when they do really versatile sports or martial arts or even when they go to the gym, the pain is like a normal part of their life. And that's not the case for me. Like I never feel unnecessary pain if it's pain it comes from from a kick to my liver or it <laughs> comes when my shoulder crashes to the ground in mm-hmm. wrestling it comes from actual <coughs> impact it doesn't come because i lift my arm or because i try to push somebody away or because i lift heavy weight it doesn't come from like the normal functions of the body yeah and here i feel like the people <coughs> this is one of the things where when people 
have this type of pains, they they move their bodies, they move their shoulder and pinching, or they try to kick, <clears throat> and it just like stops and it feels this tightness. I I feel like people kind of accept this, and, and this also comes down to the the standards that people have. They don't really believe that they could actually get rid of all of those feelings. Like you can, like you actually can have a body that is completely feeling soft. It's feeling completely agile. It can move to any direction. Like you can, you can be literally like in almost any kind of position, and your body can with, withstand it. And it can actually even produce power from there. Not only can it withstand it, it can produce a huge amount of powers in these different type of positions, and where you might be even avoiding these positions because you have pain, and you, maybe you accepted that as a part of your life. What you need to realize is that you know, the same way as people can go from you know fat to fit, like you can go from fat to shredded, you can go from skinny to to muscular, you can go from uh, let's say stiff person to very flexible person you can go from a very clumsy person to a to a professional like a dancer you can become a flowing dancer you can go from a completely uncoordinated person into a person who is very athletic who is very capable and adaptable of learning like uh, complex athletic movements and the same way you can go from a from a body that is ridden with with pains that have been there for years you can you can have a decade or more of pain you can actually remove that from your body but you kind of people uh, they they accept these pains and these limitations as the realities and they don't like, like understand that they could actually do oftentimes some basic training in just a good manner and you could improve your uh, potential dramatically like some of the a lot of the stuff even like you mentioned that to next our program what they're based on is doing things exercises there are unconventional exercises but there are also exercises that more, many people are doing but we just do them in a way that it actually heals the body like you put a little bit more effort in the correct uh, mechanism of the exercise build a little bit more effort into the mind muscle connection a little bit more effort to the body awareness and all of these different things and suddenly they start to make a huge difference because the thing here is like i know that uh, you know you you a lot of you guys who are watching these videos, you're already on this journey. And, and I'm very, like, I'm, you know, I'm happy for you and I'm proud that you are, like, on this journey. Like, you're already doing it. That's great. But as as a kind of a coach and as a just, like, a, <laughs> how I like to think, like, a, as a, just as a, as a person, I want to encourage you guys to seek for a little bit more. Like, that's what I'm here to do. I... That's why we share the stuff that we're sharing. That's why we share the training programs that we have is that I know that there's more to you. And I know that there's no more to me as well. There's even like I, I encourage myself as well to go for more, to, to, to love my body more, to respect my body more and derive my training from that. Like there's so much area on where you can actually improve right in front of you. It's like the stuff that you can do in order to dramatically increase your potential and increase the well-being of your body, it's right in front of your nose. It's just that there are these kind of limitations that we already talked in the beginning, like and these notions and these concepts of like five-year limit, just build muscle. These are all confusion. I feel like that that that's in front of you, and or that's between you and the stuff that you could be doing to really s improve your life dramatically with training. Yeah, I would say it's a matter of mindset because there's like a because our training methods and how we train it's fundamentally quality qualitative it's based on quality the principle of quality whereas yes. it, how everyone else is training or most people and the mainstream training ways they are quantitative they are based on quantity and they are based on everything you can measure for example when you go to the gym everything is about the weight everything mm -hmm. about the repetitions like volume, everything is about the frequency and so on. And that's exactly what many of these even famous coaches preach about, like Pavel Chacholin and guys, they just talk about yeah. like programming, frequency, volume, intensity, when in reality, after you have this enlightenment and after you go to the next level mentally, you realize that these are the least important 
factors in training because they are all sub subjective and they're all personal because you cannot like try to uh, push someone else's like uh, of course in the beginning you have to follow up certain sets and rule sets and so on but the higher level you go it everything becomes just qualitative in terms of how you are actually doing everything and everything becomes about your sub subjective experience like how many sets you do depends on your personal state and experience in the given day and in your development over the the span of your development like a curve mm -hmm. so so everything becomes individual in at the highest level and likewise when you do any exercise it becomes about self awareness it becomes about body mind connection it becomes about actually feeling the muscles contract and feeling the resistance actually working your body so you are not even uh, focused on the external criteria or the ex external measurements like at the like at the enlightened level and at the higher level you forget <coughs> about the weight you forget about the repetitions like muhammad ali said i don't start counting until i start to feel pain because he understood that you know it doesn't matter like how many reps you do it what matters is how you feel in the body and likewise arnold schwarzenegger said very similar things like at the highest level like nobody cares about how many reps you can do or how much you can lift because it what matters is what is the stimulus you give to your body through resistance and the resistance can be anything what matters is the stimulus and the resistance you give to your muscles mm -hmm. yeah precisely and as you mentioned the uh, muhammad Ali, like he, sta he starts to count when it starts to hurt so actually the counting starts to count when it's starts to you start to feel the muscles because this is the thing like uh, the quan these quantitative things like the you know amount of sets amount of reps and everything else it's it it does matter but it matters only after the quality is there because if the quality is there then you're doing you're counting your repetitions but they're all you're like oh i did 30 repetitions but they're all horrible like you're just causing maybe damage to your joints you're just like snapping your your joints uh, in place and you're not you're compensating you're not even targeting the muscles that you're supposed to be targeting so this this it's all actually in this case the quantity is actually negative effect if you're focusing on it <clears throat> and this is what most people do they only they let the quantity dominate everything whereas in reality the quantity is important but it's only important after the quality is there after there are certain principles that govern like your, uh, let's say, your control, your mind-muscle connection, body awareness, your mechanics during the training. When and yeah. and it's also, the repetitions are more like a mental trick. <laughs> yes, they to are. To they push are. more, like it's like, when you can do no more, you're like, okay, I just do five more. <laughs> and then after five, you do, okay, let's, I, I do five more. That's it's exactly. like a mental trick, <laughs> otherwise it doesn't matter. Yeah, but that's good that you mentioned, because that's ex I was thinking like, that's exactly how I use repetitions nowadays. It's just a mental trick, uh, like it's, like a perfectly explained because when I was doing like like these squats and I'm going like for I want to do like I just want to have a high volume I really want to push myself forward well what doesn't matter what number it is but it the number helps me to just like keep pushing even in a, even a bit more get a bit more time under tension but even even uh, with that I'm constantly paying attention to my body I'm not doing repetitions that would hurt myself like I, I, I have the ability to evaluate my, my own training, my own repetitions, the quality and the control that is going on in there. And, and whether I'm actually, whether the, st whether the stimulus to exercise is going where I want it to go or it's not going where I want it to go. And this is the, the most important thing. And not, uh, I feel like the, in many cases, uh, you, were, uh, you were talking about this, you know, that it's individual. And I think this is really, really in the heart of it. And even in what we're trying to do is we're trying to help people actually become individuals. And the most important thing is just accepting yourself. Even on this journey of reaching your potential, it is your potential. It is no one else's potential. And if you try to reach someone else's goal, someone else's numbers, there's nothing there to achieve. There's, there, it doesn't exist. 
like you're going to towards a direction where, where there's actually nothing or there's some distorted version of yourself and definitely a version of yourself that is actually lower than your own potential and the big thing here and for me at also was that our we are much more we're capable of much more than what we can imagine like i actually i don't even know where what can i eventually reach i just have a hunch of you know something like some you know what i might maybe may become but eventually i cannot fixate too much on this i need to become or this i need to become because that's usually causes us to miss the mark completely. We come, become too fixated on one area, whereas on another area, there might be a huge, enormous amount of possibilities for us to train. Yeah, actually, that's one of the biggest problems in any field, is that people focus on what they, uh, what they already understand. And that's, like, that's a problem in any field, because if you learn what you already understand, you are not actually making much progress. When in reality, it doesn't matter if it's training or singing or anything, or even like some philosophy or something like this, you should actually learn from people who you don't even understand. Because they have the knowledge of something that is outside of your like mm. understanding. But what everyone el- what everyone is doing is that, because they everyone likes to stay in their comfort zone and everyone likes to think, yeah, I'm very smart and I know what I'm doing and like this. So naturally all people they always like move towards what they can understand and that's like the recipe for not actually moving (coughs) forward as much as you could like you said you should have a hunch of where to go like you should have a direction but you shouldn't hesitate to learn from people that don't that do not make any sense to you yeah because it's most likely that these people have answers to certain areas and certain things and certain questions you don't you haven't even thought about like they haven't even come to your consciousness uh, awareness yet yeah because the the other option is that you're just like doubting you see something someone else is doing uh no like <clears throat> like I, that that can't help me like i I, w- I would never go that like i don't have the same possibility i don't have the same potential like you're just like doubting everything you're thinking like no it's not even possible for me to maybe reach there like you have to you have to switch the doubt into faith because what we what you were talking about is it requires that you have faith even though you don't know the outcome you don't know you cannot know for sure anything you cannot know at like really sort of like all the stuff that you want to achieve in a training you there's no assurity now no one is can give you this this um paper like with a contract yes you do this and this and this and then now you will achieve your results there's no 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 such thing and this thing requires faith and this is what it really (coughs) relies on and for me already for for many years what i've started to what i've started to learn to trust on is the process which is kind of like this actually it's day by day process i do the work day by day like just i focus on every single day to become my best or do a little bit like I said do a little bit more like even though I know I'm doing good I know I can do better like I know I can improve on this even though I my body feels good and it functions I know there are things where I can actually improve I still can feel I I have very high standards for myself and every single day I know that I if I just do a little bit if I do a little bit I work a bit or sometimes I work even more but just staying consistent with it and going through this process, I know I can like make a change. Whether you know, and maybe I don't reach the the end that I had in my mind, but I know I will be better. And from being better, there opens up many roads. I've, you know, of course, the trust and the faith comes from going already through the process a few times, because every time I've kept training, there's something new had opened up. Some door has opened to another possibility. And this has been the ongoing, ongoing thing. And even now, when it comes to MMA or martial arts or something, I felt sometimes discouraged. Like, well, like, am I really up for this? Like, especially after starting sparring after a long while, and you're just like getting like hammered, and you're all tired, and you're just like you're you're exhausted. You feel like you're suffocating. It's just like suffering. You think like, what is what is this like? Am I am I up for this? 
And the, in a way, the logical decision in your mind could be like, well, wait a minute, this, I can never improve from this. Like <laughs> I, I'm go- all I'm going to get is a brain damage on the way and that's it. But th- 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 that logic is not real. It's, it's not. And it's the craziest thing. Like I just after going through there repeatedly, the body start, you start to get better. Suddenly you're not getting hit anymore. Your endurance is much better. Suddenly you're the one pressing the pace. Like you're, you, it's the change happens, even though there's the threshold in the beginning that tells you like, you know, even if you don't do martial arts, just going to build your muscles at the gym, you're going to get very sore. And the first reaction, if you're super sore is, I don't want to do this again. Like, whoa, uh, uh, like I'm aching. Every muscle is just aching. But that is just the beginning. And, and the crazy thing is that it can last for a long time. Yeah, even, can, even years because <laughs> because when I started MMA for the first time, it felt like a couple of years. It felt like wow, this is a bit crazy stuff. Like how how can you ever reach the level you see on UFC? Like yeah. some Israel Adesanya. Like this is like like this is impossible. Like how can anyone be at this level? But you just keep going and you you see no progress or maybe you see little progress, but it's still hopeless. But <laughs> then you just yeah, then you just keep going and going and going and at some point you just it's like you suddenly like hit the next level. It's just you know out of nowhere it comes. And mm-hmm. the same with training, you just have to keep going. You have to keep doing the proper things. Like what's good to understand is that we all have the same hours, and h- how we train really determines our results. For example. We can all train maybe 30 minutes per day or one hour per day. But what matters is how you use that 30 minutes or one hour. Because especially in boxing, if you have a bad coach or you don't have any coach, like you can train one hour every day and after two years you will still be a very horrible fighter. But if you have a good coach and you focus on quality and focus on training as well as possible, then after one year you will be very good fighter mm-hmm. and the same applies to training as well because if you are going to do squats and if you're going to do split squats and if you're going to do pull-ups why not do it as well as possible because the quality aspect and the movement quality is what is the thing that will actually transfer to athleticism and will actually make you a better mm-hmm. at movement and better athlete and better everything because of course, like th- that's like that's the difference between the best and the average because the average just goes to the gym mm. and just does the pull-ups. Doesn't focus on the form. Doesn't focus on how well he improves the form every session. Instead, he says, "Okay, I just do this exercise, and that's it." Yeah. Whereas the the best person who makes the best results and becomes the the best as a result. Every time he goes to the gym, he spends the exactly the same time, or e- less, <laughs> or less, or yeah, more in most cases less, and does exactly the same exercise, but just does it better every time. And that's like heart of our method is that is the qualitative aspect, the quality aspect, just focusing on the form, focusing on the improving the self awareness, focusing on mind muscle connection, focusing on moving better. Like that's the secret. Is that every exercise and every training session is an opportunity to improve how well you move it's like if you just focus on the muscles then you can like the form doesn't even matter that much you can just Mm. get the most amount of weight and just live like wiggle it around like uh, in a silly way and the muscle will get damaged and as a result it will grow bigger but what is the result after two years? Like you, you have no mobility, you have no athleticism, you have nothing. Whereas, do the same thing, do the bicep curl or the pull up or the movement drill or any exercise, as beautifully, as gracefully, and as well as possible, and then the end result is like on another world. You're focusing like on the wrong end, I guess. If you're like focused on the muscles and the muscular size and all of that, I think it, you're starting from the wrong end because <coughs> the even the optimal muscle size 
and strength it comes from focusing on the quality movement like that is what eventually that is what everything is based on that is what grows the muscles the movement of your the good movement of your joints it what grows the muscles not you just like jerking something around some muscles yes you know whatever by random chance you get to activate during your throwing around the weights those will get like uh, developed but everything else all the details and everything that makes the biggest difference in all long-term development and especially like i mean the long-term potential like this even like this this five-year thing it, it even or three year it encourages you to just kind of like rush your your progress because it's not five years is nothing like it's it's not a long-term approach at all for in our training we always think of like tens of years forward like we're looking at this like how are we going to do in when we are like still 40 or 50 or 60 70 i want to be active when i'm 70 or 80 years old like i mm -hmm. that's how i m imagine myself i imagine myself doing this movement stuff this monkey movements and bear walks and duck walks and i imagine my myself doing those things when i'm old when i have maybe children or grandchildren or whatever or when i when i'm just like that's that's how i see that it's a big part of the my future life quality it's not something where i max out in five years and then i'm broken and then i actually have less quality of life for the rest of my life that's not the case at all so like people start from the completely wrong end and you said like really well like if you can or i don't know if you said it but if you if you dream about having these muscles why not dream about this other stuff as well why not why not dream about the control of the body the muscular connection and the flexibility and the softness of movement and the and the really the strength and pliability of the movement at the same time why not have all of these together there because that's possible for you to actually achieve and that's uh, it makes no sense just to focus on this sheer size because it doesn't it's it's again it's it's all about this external versus the internal and you can have the external you can have bigger muscles you can definitely have six pack you can have bigger biceps chest and everything but ultimately what you will learn during this life that it's much better if you also feel good inside your body uh, at least feel as good as you as good as you look i think <laughs> and the the muscles are also kind of reverse engineering the body in a wrong, wrong way because if you really focus on becoming good at training and building strength the muscle is the side product like that's what yeah. we have been always talking about like we are not anti muscle we are not against building muscle like mm -hmm. of course it depends on the individual and how big you want to get and so on but we are all about you know focusing on the essentials like really the things the things that actually matter and everything else you know the he the appearance and the muscle is it's a side product like even in even in the bible it says like seek his righteousness and everything else will be added to you and likewise whatever you do if it's business or life like you shouldn't focus on the money <laughs> focus on providing value focus on doing like helping people providing good services mm -hmm. and the money and the wealth and everything is like a side product and the same goes with training like the muscle and appearance is the side product of focusing on the the main essence essential things yes like if you if you want to make money with your business or something you, the most important thing is to serve the people like that's the mission and if you want to make great results regards to your physical body you have to serve the body like you have to really respect the body and 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 train in the body's terms not in your terms of what do you think it should be or what is your fixation with your goals like you need to really go like this is this has been in the heart of our yeah because i like to add to that that yeah because if you focus on the wrong thing like if you focus on just making money then these people usually become criminals or <laughs> or some really yeah. scammers or really not respectable people and likewise if you focus on just on muscle then these people usually use steroids and all this whatever performance enhancing drugs drugs and it becomes really twisted like a really dirty really like just unnatural like a not like a healthy good yeah. thing at all and i think you you start to only like later appreciate your your own strengths because 
I, I really feel like this is this has been such a how is a life changing process for me to also accept myself as or accept my own strengths and move towards them because to the thing is you know I had the phase where I was obsessed with with the like deadlifts and squats just and like overhead presses and and weighted pull ups and front levers and all of this this stuff you see some guys doing and it, it looks nice it's impressive like it's it can be inspirational but but there was a time when I was obsessed with this and the thing is like if, if I, I was like fixated on that not just because I want it I felt like I need to get that as a kind of a proof that okay now I'm a fitness guy or something like this and it's it's all selfish actually because the fact it, it doesn't matter how well I'm able to do some kind of front lever or back lever that doesn't actually make me even better at serving people or helping people it, it doesn't tell about that at all I might actually be much worse and I would be much worse at even giving advice to people if I had fixated on all these things self, selfishly and just trying to like force an outcome for myself it would be like there would be no flow with it and the other thing is that if I had gone to that road, which is no problem if some people do. For some people, that's their road probably. That's you know where they get to be the best. For me, it was something else. And I had to realize you know, my journey is different. And I would have never done the, the movement stuff that you, you see me do. And the movement stuff that many people know me about this movement. The monkey movement, the lizard movements and everything. All of these movement flows. Like People, are, people who have gotten like inspired by that by the thousands and if I would have just like being like no like I want to do these lifts I want to just go to this direction I want to do this I would have never done this movement stuff I would have never really like search it further I would have never even probably searched the the methods that we have in Adley Twin XX the the deeper training principles that the qualitative methods that we've been talking about that made a world of difference they transformed like all the th- all of my training got transformed because of that, and my results and everything, my, my the health of my body, the performance of my body, the muscles of my body got got completely transformed because of these methodologies. And I was like, all of that I, I think I could have missed is if I would have you know tried to follow the initial stuff, just tried to force this these things, this image that I had in my mind. And the point here is, as I said, you know now I can see I can see the benefits of my of of following my own path. Now I can see really the value on the hint side. Of course, I've been able to see it for some time, but still like the the longer the time goes on, the more I see the benefit of trusting into my own self and, and going towards my own strengths and going towards my own path. And this is what people I think need to realize also that you may not see the all even all the benefits right now. Like like you you have to you know, going or going to like understanding your in own individuality, your own strengths. Like you, we talk about this also so many times. People have different potentials. You know, some people will be you know, like gymnastic. Many pro gymnasts, they are short guys. They can do these skills. And you have a bigger guy like one hundred and eighty or ninety centimeters or something. He will never be able to do the stuff that the gymnast can do. But he can do something else that is amazing with his body. And this is just one example. You have these different types and you have with each person, with each body type, you have a different potential and you, you cannot like compete with the other guy. Like don't, so don't get fixated on this like too simplistic thing. You will start to see the real value of yourself only later, but you need to go on the path first. Yes, like everything you do makes sense often in hindsight. Yeah. Like you can connect the dots. Even Steve Jobs said it like many times that just have faith and focus on going in the right direction and maybe after years you can like connect the dots and realize that it was the right decision. Yeah, yeah. And and like another thing about this individuality, like you refer to for example the Bible and there's even the the uh, the other story where you know, these people go and they give like some kind of donation to the church and the rich guys come and they give a huge amount of money. And then this this uh, poor lady comes and she gives only a little bit of money, but that's all the money she has. And then like the, it's, you know, it's said that, well, you know, she gave the most out of all of these people because the others gave of their riches. This woman gave of 
everything that she had. She gave everything that she had, even though it was little. And that's just the, that you cannot see the external from the, ex based on the external, you cannot see like what's the value. Like you see some guy who is like huge and big and everything. And you know, maybe, and, and you have an, another guy who has completely different potential and he doesn't look as impressive, but he may have done the same amount of work to get to this point. Or he may have started from a much worse position to even, you know, even reach the point where he just looks kind of like normal. Like, you, uh, I don't know if I explained that well, but like you have a person who's trained maybe from a, since a young kid, like doing athletics training, like he has his parents helping him. The environment is there, the genetics are there. And it's not, it's not taken away from his achievements, but when he looks amazing, you have another guy who starts from a completely different place. Maybe he was just completely overweight. Maybe he had broken body, he had no training as a kid. You know, there was no incentives for it. And he reaches a certain state, you know, that doesn't look as impressive as this other guy, but the, he still did a huge amount of work. So like we, the point, bigger point is that we are individuals, you know, and we have our own unique journey uh, that we are, we are on. Like, just easier to focus on yourself and and have faith in your own journey yeah like proper training is it's like investing when you invest in your body later it starts to pay dividends and it can pay dividends for the rest of your like life like when you fix the posture when you fix the weaknesses and imbalances then you can actually have a body that is solid for the rest of your life unless you really go in the wrong direction but if you fix it once, then it's very easy to ma maintain. And that's why I encourage every and everyone to have like open mind and open mind and really approach everything with an open mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, but that's one of the most biggest thing here, like open mind, not a fixated mind. That's what I've been trying to tell all the time. Like, don't, don't be fixated. Don't let some internet text or internet folks determine where you're supposed to be going. Like that's not how it works. It's very arrogant to think that you know like where you can even get to. Like I said, you don't even know. I don't even know where, where we can get to. Like so we, we just all need to have the faith. Yeah, we can still be like work. light years of behind our potential, yeah, exactly. which we are going to have. Yeah, and it's hard to believe like that, but I be I think like that's possible there to be. Like there could be such a huge amount of still room for us to grow and and it doesn't matter where the person is. Like like everything is possible. Like if you see someone who is at a certain level or who is looking a certain way, of course you cannot look exactly the like the person, but but he or she probably has done certain things that has gotten her or him to the, that to that level mm -hmm. and you and you have the same ability and the same potential to also transform and change everything you want yeah. to change but that's one of the reasons why we we don't have this strict thing um i mean we we don't have like okay reach a movie star body like like something like this way we have like be, let's build up all the universal qualities in your body and then you can reach whatever it is that is your best version. Because all the other people, they focus on the quality. Yeah, like movie star body, like it's someone else's body. Yeah, like what, the, like what are you talking about? Like, like if, let's, this again is the reverse engineering and all of this. Like what you need to do is focus on the universal truth of training of your body. Start from that there, like based all your training principles on that. And from there, it's like that's the, the like you said, the, the base of the pyramid from where, you know, or the base of the skyscraper from where you're growing to whatever direction it is. But that is the only way that you can grow to your really your own potential. And we're running out of time here soon. But just as a last kind of thing, like you, like I believe, like we we're all walking like with a with kind of like check that we haven't cashed yet. You know, and this check is the potential that we have, right? And of course, in in real life, if you have a check, it's very easy. You, you to redeem it. You go to the bank, you give it, you get the money. But in real life, you know, to redeem this check, to cast the check, it, it requires you to do certain actions over time. But it's there, like it is there. Like it's even like if you're you're in like a computer game and you know that there's if you keep searching on the game, you know there's some kind of treasure somewhere hidden there. Like 
it's just to, to have the knowledge that it's there yet. And you have the you have the check that you can cash. And you can little by little every day you're gonna be redeeming it and you're getting closer and closer and closer. We never we don't even know how big of a check it is, you know, million dollars or something, but but it's there. Like so believe in that, have faith and go for it. Thank you.